Howdy, I'm back in quarantine. This is quarantine number four for me. So I've got two weeks locked in this hotel room. So I'm gonna try and uh, knock out a couple of videos. Now this video, this is, um, this is purely aimed at the sort of the GoPro techie geeks, right? So if you're just looking for um, a video of uh, some of my uh, motorcycle adventures, you can skip this one. This is um, pretty hardcore techie geeky um, yeah, GoPro optimization videos. For a while now, I've been thinking that perhaps my settings are not actually optimized for motorcycles because I've largely been following a rule which is called the 180 degree shutter rule. And you'll hear people talk about this rule all over the internet. There's something called the 180 degree rule of shutter, which is basically just a standardization that the motion film industry uses. So to mimic motion the same way that your eye perceives it in real life, the shutter speed should be set to double your frame rate. So there's this thing in video called the 180 degree shutter rule. When filming video, it's really important to get the correct shutter speed for the frame rate that you're filming at. This is known as the 180 degree rule, and it will ensure that you get good motion blur in your footage. This rule makes total sense um, when you're trying to shoot normal cinematic footage. So um, if you set your, your frame rate for 24 frames per second, then the, the rule, the 180 degree shutter rule says you set your shutter speed to double that. So it's about one 148th of a second. And this makes sense for normal, normal um, subjects, but I've realized for motorcycles, it doesn't make sense. And I've proven that with some tests that I've just done quite recently. And um, based on the results of these tests, I've actually altered my optimum GoPro settings. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the tests. If you don't wanna see the tests, then you can just skip to the, um, the conclusion at the end and see the changes in the settings that I've recommended. But if you actually wanna judge these for yourself, then just um, watch these three different tests for yourself. So in this first test, I'm looking at the relationship between the frame rate, the speed at which you're shooting, and secondly, the um, time base. So when you're editing, you can choose how many frames per second in your edit. And I wanted to sort of really see whether or not um, it was noticeable if you didn't shoot in the same time base that you're editing in. So for this test, I picked um, a consistent strip of road and I did multiple runs up that road and I kept the bike at exactly the same speed by using the cruise control. So the only thing that varies between these three different runs is the frame rate that I'm shooting at. So in this one, I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, and you can see it's really smooth because I'm, my edit is at 24 frames per second. For this second one, I'm still editing at 24 frames per second, but I've shot at 30 frames per second. And if you look at those trees as they go past, you can see they're, they're juttering, they're, it's not smooth. And that's because in the editing, it's having to drop six frames every second out of those 30 frames. And that's what's causing that jarring. In this final run, I've now increased the frame rate to 60 frames a second. Again, I'm editing at 24. So it's having to drop frames and you can see it is still jerky, but it's not as jerky as the um, video that I shot previously at 30 frames per second. So if we have a look at this, um, in the top corner, I'm going to put a link to the 30 frame per second edit. So if you actually want to have a look at that for yourself, you can. But after looking at both the 24 and the 30 frame per second edit, this is a summary of my results. And you can see top marks go to the um, combination of shooting at 24 frames per second and editing at 24 frames per second. Um, in my opinion, that was the smoothest overall result. I think shooting at 30 frames per second is unacceptable if you're editing at 24 frames per second. Um, and if you are shooting at 30 frames per second, then it's, it's very smooth shooting at 30 and at 60. So if you want to do slow-mo, I would probably be tempted to go do a 30 frame per second time base. 
So in the second test, I wanted to have a look and see whether or not um, the choice of lenses I was using was optimal for that, that point of view perspective. So this first run, this is um, exactly the same run as in the first test. So I'm using a wide lens and I'm shooting at 24 frames per second. And again, you'll see it's, it's beautiful and smooth. Um, if you pause this, you'll actually see it's nice motion blur, um, you know, on the side of the road. Uh, it's a, it's a, a very smooth and it's a great angle. I'm getting quite a wide view with this. The second test, I've changed the lens to linear. That's basically the only difference. So um, it's still 24 frames a second, but now I'm using um, a tighter lens. Um, so you're not getting as wide a shot. And from my perspective, when you're shooting point of view, um, I don't think it's as good as that wide lens. And this final one, um, on the GoPro 9, it actually has a mode called linear plus horizon leveling. So it means that, you know, it doesn't matter if you lean your head, um, it's going to keep the horizon dead level. And I was kind of interested to see what this looked like for point of view. And you can see there the horizon staying direct um, dead level. And while it's not bad, um, I actually prefer um, not having the horizon leveled. So my um, choice here is the wide lens. However, I did find that horizon leveling is pretty cool when you're actually getting shots, either looking back at the bike or at the front of the bike. Um, the horizon leveling looks really good for these type of shots. The third test that I wanted to do was around motion blur. Um, I'd been targeting a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second, and I wanted to just run some experiments to see is that correct or is it optimum? So this first run gives you a good idea of what it looks like if you don't use an ND filter. So um, the shutter speed's pretty high, it's about 1 2,000th of a second. And if you watch the trees, especially on the right hand side, you can see it just looks hectic, it looks chaotic. If you pause the video, you'll see that the details razor sharp. There's no blur at all in this. And uh, yeah, I just think it looks a little bit chaotic on the sides. Now this is with an ND8 filter, and this has actually got 1 500th of a second shutter speed. And you can see this actually looks pretty pleasing. There's a little bit of blur there, but it's not too much. Um, but it's certainly a lot smoother. Again, if you pause this, you'll see the blur on the side of the um, of the vegetation. And this last run was with an ND32. Um, this, is, this was running at 1 125th of a second, which is kind of the settings I have been using historically. But as I look at this now, I actually think there's a little bit too much blur. Um, you know, it, it looks quite cinematic, but I just think it's a bit too much, a little bit overdone which is why I'm refining my recommendation to 1 250th of a second. So out of these, I don't like the one without a polarizer, so I've given that a C. I actually liked the, um, the second and the third runs, but I think the optimum is actually right in between them. Um, and I didn't have my ND16 filter with me, but I am now gonna start targeting a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. So I've now refined my point of view settings and here is um, what they look like. So you can see the middle column is if you're not gonna do any post-production or editing and the column on the right are the settings if you are planning to do post-production. And for shooting, so I'm now targeting an ideal shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, whereas I used to do 1 125th. And to do that, generally, you want to use an ND16 filter if it's bright light, bright day, and an ND8 if you're in cloudy or overcast conditions. So there you have it. I hope you found those tests useful. Um, there's a ton of information which I couldn't really cover on the video, but if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below and I'll happily address them.